You know, science and physics say that the whole world and everything within it is made up of tiny, tiny particles called atoms. Now, if you take a very powerful uh, microscope and look deep into these atoms, you will find that they are made up of even tinier particles such as protons and neutrons. And then physics tells us, and this is after years and years and years and years of study, and then physics tells us that if you look even deeper into these tiniest of all particles, you will find that there is just something like a wave of, they call it energy, a wave of something that penetrates and holds these atoms together, holds everything together. And physics and science have are yet to identify what this wave thing this energy thing is that they call what it is and the answer is in the bible and the answer is this it's found in colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 17 the son jesus christ is the image of the invisible god in him all things were made things in heaven and things on earth things visible and things invisible this wave all things have been created through him he is before all things and in him all things hold together that's the secret key here in him all things hold together physics tells us that these tiny tiny particles and there are trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of them something is holding them together and scripture clarifies here that the one holding these together is Jesus Christ himself. It is the spirit of God. So physics like to say it's a wave. It's like an energy. No, it's the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Everything we see around us was made by God. Everything was made by God. The trees, the plants, the walls, the people, everything. Hallelujah. God is so amazing. And yet most people refuse to receive God. They reject him. The Bible tells us in John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believe in him, in other words, whoever believes in him, any nation, any tribe, any language, regardless of your color, regardless of your culture, regardless of your gender, whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loved us so much that he sent his son to take away our infirmities, our defilements, our sins, our iniquities, the very things that separate us from God. Jesus took them upon himself and crucified them. And then raising from the grave, he's saying, I have power over these things. Now receive me into your heart so you too can walk in the overcoming of these things just like I am. And by doing so, we walk in a life that is holy and pure and thus we are reconciled with God. The very God that created everything. Look around. Look around. The very God that created everything, 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 everything. The very essence of God is holding everything together. He can in one second take that away and everything falls apart. Everything falls apart. Everything stops existing. You see, we are only existing because of the love of God. If God had no love for us, first, he wouldn't have sent his son, Jesus Christ. And second, if God had no love for us, he wouldn't be putting up with us still. 
he could just remove that so-called energy that physics call energy but it's, it's it's in essence it's the very essence of god he could just remove that and everything falls apart because it says here in colossians chapter 1 verse 15 through 17 in him all things hold together You see, physics and science, most of them, physicists and scientists, most of them, uh, are atheists. They deny God. And the reason why they deny God, one of the most common reasons, there are many reasons. They could have had childhood issues, childhood traumas, for many reasons. The main reason why, I believe, is that if they accept God and acknowledge him, If they accept God and acknowledge him, there's nothing for them to study anymore. There's nothing for them to discover anymore. But if they deny him, then they can keep digging, keep digging, keep digging to discover where everything came from, how the world was created. And what they are really discovering is just what God has already done, what God has already created. You see, when physicists, when they create these powerful microscopes, so they can zoom in and take a look at the atom and then zoom even further to see that the atom is made up of protons, neutrons and so on and so forth. You know, they feel that they're discovering something, but what they're really seeing is just coming to the realization of what God has already created thousands of years ago. To God, it's nothing new. You see, they talk about time, space, matter. And if God was real, God can't be real because it completely goes against time, space and matter. And we've already discovered that time, space and matter are true, are real. So if that's real, then God can't be real. But that's where they're being deceived by the devil again. Because time, space and matter is mentioned in the book of Genesis. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Well, in the beginning, there's time. God created the heavens, there's space, and the earth, there's matter, time, space, matter. Stop falling for the lies of science and physics. The truth is God. God is the truth. Jesus Christ is the truth. He is the one who holds everything together. so much lies out there on social media mainstream media they're just con continuously programming the human mind programming 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 from a young age since the day you are born they are programming you programming you programming you so you can see the world through their eyes and what is their eyes not the way of God. The Bible tells us the whole world is under the sway of the evil one. Look at what is happening around the world. That's not the work of God. When people say, oh, you know, that, that nation was so sinful, so God sent them a tsunami. God doesn't send tsunamis. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, not the wages of God is death. Why do we blame God for a tsunami? Why do we blame God for hurricanes? Why do we blame God for earthquakes? That's, that's not God. God doesn't do these things. These are the works of the devil. People say that nation was so sinful, so God sent them a tsunami. No, that nation was so sinful, so they had so many demonic doors open that the devil came in. The Bible says Satan is the prince of the air, the atmosphere, the air. You don't think he can create these things, tsunamis and things like that. And winds. 
Remember when Jesus was in the boat with his disciples? They were crossing over to the other side of the, of the sea. And it says a boisterous wind started blowing the boat and the waves and everything. That wasn't God trying to kill his son Jesus, sending him this boisterous wind. And Jesus said to the wind, Peace, be still. So it was something that was against Jesus. It says to him, be quiet. And it obeyed him. So something of darkness. People say, oh, God is the one who sent those waters in Brazil because they were mocking Jesus. That's not God. That was, that's, that's the work of the devil. That's the work of the, the, the consequences of sin. That's not God. It's like taking a cup of poison, drinking it, knowing the good and well that in five minutes, this is a deadly poison, you will be dead. You take it and drink it, you die. And then someone looks at you and says, you see, that person was living in sin. So God killed her. God didn't kill you. Your sinful life, your iniquities opens demonic doors and allows the enemy to come in to whisper into your mind, drink that poison. And then the consequences of your sin kill you. You know, let me tell you who my heavenly father is. Because a lot of people, even Christians, they don't know him. He is a loving God. He is forgiving. Scripture says the mercies of God are new every day. He's merciful. He's a God of peace. He wants nothing more than to save you. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So a lot of people are on, on, on the path of perishing. If God wanted you to perish and kill you with storms and hurricanes and earthquakes, he would have left you there. But he didn't. He sent his son. See him as something like a lifeboat on a sinking ship. And people see the sick sh sink, uh, uh, ship sinking. And instead of jumping on that lifeboat, they're prideful. Who was prideful and fell from heaven? Satan. So who's putting those thoughts in your mind to reject Christ and not God? Satan. They see the ship sinking and instead of jumping on the lifeboat, Jesus, they're prideful. I don't want to, I, I don't want to follow Jesus. I don't want to get on that boat. I want to do things my way. Yeah, but you're on the path that is perishing. Don't shove your beliefs down my throat. Don't tell me what to do, how to live my life. And, and and all of this, this way of thinking, it's a defiled way of thinking. It's like a darkened way of thinking. It's because from a very young age, the world around you is programming your mind, programming, 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 programming. You reach the age of five, six, seven years old uh, after watching all these Hollywood movies. And there's even so much sin in the kids' cartoons now. And all these xbox video games that the kids are playing it's all about guns guns and murder and killing someone for points and if you don't kill them then you will lose points so you have to kill and it's all about putting myself first so i can survive and forget everything else forget everyone else it's all about me me myself and i and it's all in the hollywood movies it's about rape it's about benefit it's about uh, pimps selling prostitutes it, it, what's that program in the young boy's mind with uh, use use women at, at any cost when the bible clearly tells you the head of the house is the man and the head of the man is christ so if men are being programmed like this from a very young age they grow up they don't most of them a lot of them don't know how to work don't know how to provide for themselves never mind provide for for the family uh, it's immature it's all about me, myself and I, my wounds. I'm so hurt now. I'm so offended. I'm, I'm the victim here. And um, it destroys the houses. Destroys the families. 
and in, and and women is programming it is programming men with a lot of things that's just an example i've given you this world around is programming us from a very young age women is programming them with if you want to if you want to succeed in life you have to be sexual you have to sell yourself sell your body that doesn't necessarily mean an exchange sexual activity for money although it could mean that too it could be sell yourself like well this person is providing for me so although they're a bit abusive let me stay because it's benefit benefiting me right now that's still selling yourself selling yourself short selling yourself spiritually or physically emotionally mentally with people that are just um, doing the work of the devil that are just not following in the ways of god could be narcissistic relationships abusive relationships putting up with things that god absolutely does not want you putting up with god does not want you putting up with abuse it goes both ways god doesn't want men putting up with abuse either so there are some abusive women out there that's not god's plan for you and then they turn and then they've just had so much abuse so much trauma so much pain so much hurt growing up and then what did they do they turn around and blame god oh you know if god was real why would he allow this to happen to me and even if he is real because he's allowed it to happen i want to have nothing to do with him because he's an evil god people speak like that people speak like that sadly all the mess people get themselves into god did not tell you to get yourself into that mess and we see that when we read the bible if you take the time out to read the bible you'll see God's all about healing you. God's all about delivering you, setting you free. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish. God does not want you to perish. Whether in that sickbed, whether in that prison, whether on the homeless on the streets, whether in that abusive relationship, whether with that abusive boss, God doesn't want you perishing. Whether in that depression, in that anxiety, in that whatever mental oppression physical oppression oppression god does not want you perishing god does not want you living your life in stress from the morning to the night the bible says the people of god shall be the head and not the tail the lenders and not the borrowers for he is your shepherd and you shall not lack and no weapon formed against you shall prosper every evil tongue that rises against you you shall condemn He will make you lie down in green pastures. And he who believes in him out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Well, if you're in places of barrenness and there's no overflow of living water, guess what? You're not dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So if you are not abiding under the shadow of the almighty in his protection in other words and it's because you are not dwelling in the secret place of the most high you are not dwelling with god it's from your end it's not from god's end scripture says god has given us his children all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm and love and joy and peace and kindness and goodness and and good health and freedom and all all the spiritual blessings in the heavenly realm if you are not experiencing that it's not from god's ends it's from your end you're the one drawing away from him you're the one not wanting to follow his ways but follow the ways of this world scripture says the whole world is under the sway of the evil one it says you cannot be a friend of the world and a friend of god at the same time because they are in conflict with one another so if you are not experiencing the spiritual blessings of god it's because you're choosing to walk in the world either fully in the world or either coming to Christ but being lukewarm or a backslider or wanting to live with Christ but wanting to hold on to parts of the world as well because there are parts of darkness that you're still attracted to there are things that demons have that you're still attracted to such as fornication or lust or drugs or alcohol and things like that but I'm, I'm saying this you know we have to get out of this defiled conscience defiled defiled conscience and we need to pray 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 that god give us the conscience of holiness and purity because we have been bombarding they have been bombarding our minds programming us from a very young age 
to think that evil is okay through Xbox games, the 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 movies, the the worldly music. It's even in the schools what they're teaching you. You know, they're teaching eleven year old kids sex education. So these kids grow up, they become, you know, their adult years, 20, 30, 40, 50, 80 years old, and they're still believing that this evil they see in the world is okay, it's normal. Ah, that's just how the world is. That's not how the world is. And because you live in this world, you don't have to be a part of this world, be in this world, but not of this world. Be in this world, but not of this world. Jesus came and he was in this world, but he was not of this world. He was doing something completely different. He was in this world, but he was com con continuously in communion with the Father. He was operating from a place of heaven, not earth. We live on earth. We walk the earth and we're operating from a place of earth. Jesus and his disciples walked the earth, but they were operating from a place of heaven. There is a difference. And that's why the apostle Paul got bitten by a poisonous snake and nothing happened to him. He's saying the things of the world cannot affect you unless you are walking in the ways of this world. Things of the world can't affect you unless you're walking in the ways of this world. So if the things of this world are affecting you, stop walking in the ways of this world. Choose Jesus Christ and walk with him. That's where all the power and authority is. And stop believing all these lies on even, even mainstream media. All they show you is evil and war. And one nation is fighting against the other. Everything on there is lies anyway. Right? And, and, and what they're doing is, again, they're programming, programming, programming you with fear. Because once fear comes in you, it paralyzes you. You par paralyze your thinking and your body. And this is why God said, I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. So fear strips you of your power, strips you of love, and strips you of a sound mind. So it confuses you. Right? Stop believing this science. Stop believing this physics. Stop believing. Stop. Stop. Get in your Bible. Seriously, people. Get in in your bible if you want to know the truth get in your bible scripture says jesus says if you abide in my word the word of god scripture bible the holy bible if you abide in my word then in other words only then you are truly my disciples and then in other words only then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In other words, without following in the ways of Jesus, you will not know the truth and the truth will not set you free from the deceit, the lies, the deceptions, the control, the manipulation, the fear of this world. And this is the evilness, the sin, the iniquity, the defilement of this world. And this is why scripture says, he who is a friend of this world it cannot be a friend of God because God and this world are in contrary to one another. They do not agree. They are opposites. You cannot be a friend of this world and a friend of God at the same time. Stop believing all this, the physics, the science, the, 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 the medicines, the the doctor gives you a diagnosis. To, you know, I, I was watching a video a few days ago, this girl had cancer. The doctors gave her a diagnosis that the, the therapy is not working on you. And, 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 and she said, she said to the doctor, okay, then do another therapy on me. And she said, no, there's, there's nothing else to do. You're going to die. That's, that was the doctor's diagnosis. That, 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 these were his words. You're going to die. And she said, we'll do therapy. It's not working on you. We're not going to do other therapy on you. You have to go home and, um, basically wait to die and she accepted that as her portion obviously she doesn't know scripture that says by the stripes of jesus christ you are healed can you see why you can't be a friend of the world and a friend of god at the same time because they are opposites and she went home and she made a video and she put it on social media and she's she, she's asking people to contribute to her funeral costs so she's accepted that as her portion when scripture clearly says um 
by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. And this is why Jesus says, if you abide in my word, which word? Well, one of those words is by my stripes, you are healed. If you abide in my word, then you are my disciple. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In other words, without abiding in the word of Jesus, you won't know the truth. This poor girl doesn't know the truth. And so scripture says, then you won't be set free. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. In other words, if you do not know the truth, you won't be set free. Just like this poor girl. I usually don't message, comment on the people's posts, but I did. And I told her about Jesus and I gave her some scriptures as well. Stop believing science and physics and medicines and everything. Stop believing everything and anything that goes against the word of God. That's what I'm trying to say.